is the best experience. Termite. Termites are fascinating creatures, but not in the way you want them in your house. They are social insects living in large colonies with the queen, workers, and soldiers. These workers are the ones to worry about. They have a seemingly endless appetite for wood, and your home's wooden structure are a prime target. There are different types of termites, but the most common ones you would encounter are subterranean termites. These guys live underground and build more tubes to travel between the soil and your home's foundation. The scary thing about termites is that they can go unnoticed for a long time. By the time you see visible signs of damage, the infestation could be quite serious. Every year, termites cost billions of dollars in damage to homes in the US alone. So how do you know if you have termites? Here are a few red flags to watch out for. Mud tubes, hollow sounding woods, discarded wings, and frass. The good news is that there are ways to prevent termites from taking up residence in your own home. Moisture control, eliminate wood sources, seal cracks and gaps, and schedule regular inspections. Invite the pest control operator to inspect your home for signs of termites and recommend the best treatment options if needed. By following these tips and staying informed, you can protect your homes from this destructive pest. Remember, early detection is key and if you suspect a termite problem, do not hesitate to call a professional for help. This is the Pest of the Week brought to you by SP Fumigation Services. Are you a builder? a contractor, a real estate developer, or a private house owner. Did you know that over 90% of Nigeria's land is prone to termites, destroying over $5 billion worth of properties annually? Do not build that next house without first treating the soil with Premise Termite Buster that gives up to 10 years building protection guarantee against subterranean termites. Premise 200 SC is used for both pre- and post-construction treatment. Premise 200 SC is made by Bayer and distributed in Nigeria by D Fortune Pest Shop. For more technical enquiries on termites and general fumigation, contact WhatsApp line 0703-289-6271. Order online at pestshop.ng. Protect your hard-earned assets against termites today. All right, all right, all right. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever state, whatever city, whatever country that you are listening to me from. My name is Shofu Babalola Tiofilos SB for short. Uh, live here right now. You know, today is a wonderful Sunday, an amazing Sunday. You, uh, I mean, ladies, for the, for, the, for the women in pest control, you know how we do it here first before I go to if I go to you guys <laughs> before I talk about you guys let me first let, complete my introduction <laughs> you know how we do it on this platform here we talk about pest control we talk about pest pest and pest control pest control strategies techniques and also tips and also strategies that you can implement to solve pest control problems you know tools equipment marketing strategies and a lot of things and so on and so on you know so we also bring in experts across different field across different states across different country to talk about different things that has to do with this industry this wonderful industry that we are in currently and at this moment at this time let's now you know celebrate the wonderful 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 women that are in pest control so for those who are tuned in right now on insightradio.net you can also you know watch us live on insights radio underscore on facebook so you can see the magic things how things are really really going on so if you want to see my guests tonight or do it for those who are that uh, who are watching now cannot they, they they don't even have access to see him now at the moment <laughs> but definitely you would see our guest live in the studio but if you want to really really see who is the guest for tonight you know just rush straight down to facebook at insight radio underscore to be able to see our guest live in the studio right so back to the women all the women you know two days ago we celebrated uh we celebrated the the wonderful females two days ago we celebrated wonderful females and uh you know the that was, that was uh, just the women and now we are celebrating the mothers today we're celebrating the mothers so shout out to all the women in pest control that are mothers today shout out to you guys you're doing wonderful you're doing wonderfully well out there you're making us proud you know upcoming fathers hopefully hopefully i, say, I mean hopefully um you know the the fathers 
or the upcoming fathers will be celebrated like the way they celebrate the women. No, no capping. All right. Okay. So first and foremost, I have a guest. And so over to you, the pest control prof, the number one uh, professor in every single thing that has to do with pest and pest control. Mr. PCO, Mr. Tsuks Ongosu. Thank you very much for having you uh, on the show tonight. Pinhead. A crack in the floor as much as small as a pinhead, they can enter through that place to infest, you know, a facility. And then one mistake a lot of us in the industry make is this. You know, um, we we don't practice exclusion so much. For those of us that practice exclusion, we feel that exclusion is limited to rats you know rodent treatment rodent control but you see in termite control too especially subterranean termites you have to do exclusion because the fact is this that those places they are coming out from yeah those cracks those holes you need to seal them hmm. if you if you don't seal them what happens is that some other termites can come out from there you have to seal those areas where they're coming out from. Sometimes they even come out through, you know, the grout lines in tiles. The grout lines, you know, when you see tiles now, outside yes. floor, those lines. I don't yes. know whether, I don't know how experienced yes. you are in termite treatment. You see them come out of those places. Have you seen that? They do. So when they, when you see such things, you see more tubes around that, those places. You see, in fact, you see them coming out. After treatment, you need to seal those grout like the holes in the grout lines. Sometimes you go to skirtings on walls, you know, skirtings or skirting board, you know, that's those things they put to the base of walls in a living apartment. Yes. yes, like the base boards. Yeah, some people use boards, some people use uh, uh what's it called now? Tiles, some people use Tiles, cement. Yes, yes. Okay, so termites come out from those places to from gaps in those places. In between mm -hmm. yes. You, you have to seal them up. That's exclusion for termite. But because we lack um, education, most of us, yes, I'm being, I'm being frank and I'm being uh, blunt. A lot of us in this industry, we are, uh, let me say, we are not educated. Some of us, we, <laughs> we double into the industry and we become plodding along. Thinking that we can just be learning on the on the Bro, job. You want to shake tables? <laughs> yes, I need to shake this table. A lot of people are uneducated, and they don't even care. They are not. Um, they they are not interested in bettering themselves in uh, acquiring education. The only way you can make a headway in this industry is by being educated. Just imagine a doctor. Who didn't go to medical school? How do you call that person a doctor? That's the same thing with us. Mm. If you are doing pest control, you have not been trained. You are a quack. You know, so training is key. If you are not trained, all these things I'm talking about, you won't even know them. I'm, you know, I, I have mentioned that you do. They do exclusion for termites. A lot of people don't know that. You know. True. A lot of people, True. a lot of people, they feel that it's when, when you get into a termite treatment job, when you spray and all that, you solve the problem. You don't. And a lot of people don't even know the classes of uh, pesticides to use for termite jobs. And for those that know, mm -hmm. they don't even know <laughs> how to mix the concentration they should use. So those people that feel, you know, that saying, they say, uh, some people ask, is it conk enough? <laughs> Those people that are in that school of thought eh, that mix uh, pesticides to be conk, you can't succeed in termite jobs because if your treatment, if your solution is conk and it kills the termites immediately, it knocks them down on the spot, you will not be able to mm. get at the queen. Mm. You know? You know, yes. um, for That's for ta for termites, we have castes. You know, they have castes. There's this caste system in in, in termites kingdom. 
we have the soldiers yeah yeah we have the workers we have the queen the yeah the king now you see those workers eh? we need them in fact regard worker termites as your friend if mm. you are a pest management professional regard uh, worker termites as your friend because the, you need them to deliver the poison you are planting to the queen you need the worker termites to deliver the poison whatever you are putting inside the soil you need them to deliver it to their yes to deliver it to the to their <laughs> colony so if you nah. kill them off with first application how do you achieve that and the fact is this um how do you achieve that pest yes there are pesticides and there are pesticides you know so there are pesticides we call repellent oh yeah hmm. insecticide we call repellent insecticides right yes there are the ones we call non-repellent so if you are not educated non you will not know the right ones to use if you use repellent insecticides eh, to do your trenching you know but there are different ways of treating um um subterranean termites one of the effective ways of treating them is it's trenching yeah soil treatment uh creating a barrier around this around the uh facility by trenching you understand trench and put your treatment there if you use repellent insecticide for trenching hmm? that domino okay. effect kill that uh we desire in the termite control you yes. will not get it you will not get it because as soon as Sorry, the termite, can you repeat can you repeat that again i said when you use repellent insecticides for your trenching the, the domino effect that we desire in yes. the treat in the killing of termites you will not achieve it yes because the domino effect you know what domino mm -hmm. effect means now you kill this one it affects this one it affects the other ones and they all die like that okay so yes you 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 yes, need that once then carry the pesticide to themselves yes. exactly so if you use repellent insecticides the termites the worker termites that are supposed to take back the poison in the insecticide back to their colony they will die upon contact with the uh, insecticide in the soil that's the way repellent insecticides work it works in two ways it kills them and then they can repel them so repelling them means that when they get close to that place they have a feeling of that insecticide that they turn back you get it it keeps them away from you know coming into that facility then if they venture far enough to go through this treated soil they will die so if they die and if they run away from the insecticide which termites will take the thing back to the colony I ask you, uh, SB, <laughs> will, will there be any time I left to take it back to the colony? No. But if you use, uh, if you use non-repellent, the way the non-repellent insecticides work is this. The insect pest, will, uh, that's when you use it in the right way, if you mix it well, right in, the right, in the right concentration, right? Because even if you, if you increase the concentration, in, yes. uh, with a uh, non-repellent it will act like a uh, repellent too so there are ways to use these things to follow the product uh, prescription right so if you use it that way what happens is that yes. it doesn't kill the termites immediately it allows the termites to even swim through the insecticide without dying mm. so the effect starts after some time so they could have gone about their business and gone back to the colony before the the uh effect the killing effect or whatever of the insecticide starts kicking in so they are not knocked down they give termites the luxury of still walking about even after they have been uh, infected by the active ingredients in the uh, insecticide so the best way to treat subterranean termites or the best kind of insecticides to use for them are non-repellent insecticides. Repellent. 
and if you are not educated mm. you will not know what which ones are non repellent you will not know which ones are repellent so go for training i'm not going to be teaching you what non repellent if you are listening to me and you are hearing us right now that eh, what we are telling you is go and get training this show is not for training it's for enlightenment right it's for nuggets get training and understand these things because if you don't it will reflect on your output if it will reflect on the job you're doing and then you mm. won't have the uh, respect of your clients then there's one other thing eh? mm. you see um the building culture in this part of the world um is is warped you see when people are building mm. they are supposed to have that mentality or they are supposed to know that uh, in this part of the world termites are an issue so even before construction yes. before construction termite treatment is supposed to be done soil treatment is supposed to be, be done. done then apart from soil you see now let me let me take us to another level yeah this is some Let's something we, something we don't even practice in this part of the i i practice it and i give uh i render that service to my clients you understand and it's a fantastic one it is called pipe reticulation system so with this kind of approach yeah we lay pipes yes. around around a a building at foundation level right we lay the pipes the idea is this those pipes will remain there even after the, the building stands after the facility stands and there will be points you know from the ground where you've laid those uh, pipes that will be protruding out on the body of this facility where you can be introducing thermeticide into uh, the pipe. The pipes now, the way it's done is that the pipes are perforated such that when the treatment goes through the pipe, it will be delivering insecticide to the base, to the foundation of the building. So with that in place, eh, over years, you can be doing your uh termite treatment without even breaking uh the floor of the facility do you get do you understand what i'm saying it's called pipe reticulation system but a lot of people don't know that if you don't sorry edu education you won't know this when, when you were explaining that um, pipe reticulation uh, system the 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 whole audio was really really um fluctuating so i think it's much more clearer now so you can just take a little bit back like a summary of it again. Okay. Again, I was for those saying, who are listening, you can drop in your questions or your anything you have or suggestions or comments or anything on the chat box at insightready.net. Yes, sir. I was saying that there's another level to termite treatment, which a lot yes. of people don't, don't know. So if you are on this show, you are lucky. You are here. And 100%. you hear it. <laughs> You're going to hear it. But hearing it doesn't mean that you should go and be practicing it. You need to learn it. Exactly. You, understand? you need to learn it and be proficient at it. So it is called pipe reticulation system. So mm. with this system, pipes are laid around the perimeter of the structure or along the periphery of the structure, both inner and outer. Yeah. They are laid in such a way that in future you can be introducing insecticide into those pipes and then the thing because the pipes now will be perforated before they are okay. buried so the insecticide when you introduce it from the opening it will be yes. going down and be soaking the soil inside the facility while it is standing up mm. i get what i'm saying so yes, you, pro it. you protect the structure for life you don't have to be breaking ground or uh, drilling mm. and all that so the, the 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 building stays protected for years what you just need to do maybe every five years introduce thermiticide mm. every 10 years introduce thermiticide nice. okay so that's another level and uh, it's so interesting that pest, co pest control pest management is an interesting field it's only interesting if you know how if exactly. you are informed if you exactly. are edu educated okay <laughs> it's it's it'll be boring if you if you if you cost casala for your clients <laughs> exactly and, <laughs> and even cost casala for yourself 
Exactly. Because the way it works is this. When you cause Casala for your client, yes. the client will arrest you. <laughs> you know, let, let me still go back to the, um, I mentioned Casino Heights, you know, it's an apartment building. Okay. You know, the first thing I told them when I went for inspection in that place, because all the doors were affected by, um, uh, but were infested with uh, dry water mites. I wow. told them that they need to arrest the contractor that fixed those doors. Bro. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. what I told them. That they need to ar arrest the person. Wow. You know, because it's causing them... In initially, I told them that it's possible that they might need to change all the doors. Now, they started mm. begging that we should look at what we can do. So they're begging. Mm. And then, we are looking at it. <laughs> you know <laughs> so if as a pest management professional you go and handle a project that you don't know anything about you can end up in jail one you can end up endangering the life of your client two you can end up that's endangering true. your own life too that's true you know yeah so that's it amazing 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 you've you've brought in a whole light into the the topic of termite control and um basically termite treatment. So before, initially, you talked about the aspect of soil treatment. And I want you to like delve into that aspect. How do they treat the soil? For instance, now we have, uh, you know, it's best experience. So it's basically like uh, your own experience. So if, for example, we have a major building that is infested with termite, with subterranean termite to be specific, subterranean termite, and uh, there are processes that are involved in dealing with the subterranean termite because their colony is like really not seen. It's underground. So how do professional pest control operators deal with this? How do they solve this problem? And um, in terms of, you know, products, there, there is an existing product that I know of that, that, that has this very good uh, 10 years warranty, and that's Premier, uh, Premise SC. Premise SC by Bayer and uh, distributed by DeFortune. Fortunately, uh, the, the, they are the major sponsor for today's program, the Termite Control Program. So it's one of the very good products that works perfectly well for termite control anywhere in the world. Most of the subterranean termite works 100% well. I'm sure Prof has something to say about the uh, premise. Yes. I, I've used, you know, Great. the, the um, last year, okay. last year, the, one of the jobs that we did, we bought a carton of premise for that job. Ha. Huh. Yes, that's to tell you how big the job is. Now, oh. the reason why we went for premise is that, uh, as mm. it were, for now, or for as at that time, even yes. for now, premise has been in the forefront. Okay. 100%. Yes. One thing about premise is this, eh? you know, <laughs> because people are not informed, people are not educated, they may not know what is contained in that one bottle of premise so let me quickly break it down mm. first of all the active ingredient in premise is imidacloprid imidacloprid is a mm. neonicotinoid insecticide yeah it is systemic when we say yes. something is systemic is that when you use it maybe on plants it becomes part of the system of the plant so it will not kill a plant yeah so it binds with the Systemic. plant yes becomes one with the plant such that any pest that feed on that plant will eat out of the poison uh, active ingredient in the insecticide and die without killing the plant and all systemic insecticide they work well with the soil they bind with the soil such that they become part of the soil so, because you are treating the soil, you need an active ingredient that binds well with the soil. Do you get the logic? Yes. 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 Mm. So, you need an active ingredient that binds with the soil. Now, uh, premise, you see that 200 they put there? Yeah? Yes. 200. It means there are 200 grams of the active ingredient, which is imidacloprid, inside that one bottle of premise. 
That's a whopping amount. Hmm. It's a whopping amount. And that's why you can, if you if you mix premise according to the label prescription, you see that you're using just a little for so much water. Yes. That's yeah, that's because of the um the amount of the active ingredient that the is present in the one liter. Hmm. So because of that, you can mix the thing with a lot of water, and it's important that you mix with a lot of water because the idea is this if it is not well mixed it will be killing the um termites immediately which we we don't want exactly exactly which we don't want so you have to follow product prescription very well so mm. that is premise premise is a fantastic product it is non repellent <laughs> it doesn't smell exactly. it doesn't it doesn't choke. In fact, <laughs> when you mix it, after mixing it, it looks like water. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like water. And it does the job. So soil treatment simply means what it is called, soil treatment. Right. You are treating the soil so that termites will not be able to pass through the soil to get to the facility you are treating. Yeah? You are treating exactly. the soil so that any termites that come in contact with that soil will be affected by the insecticide that you have treated the soil with. And the beautiful thing about premise is that it is a solution concentrate, SC. That's that SC you see there. SC, solution concentrate. And whatever you, you, they, they, you, you see as SC, eh, they are... Uh, What's going on? They are residual. They are not like uh, ECs, emotion concentrate. I don't want to start going to going technical to be explaining all that. But when you see SC, which is solution yes. concentrate, solution when you see yes, when you see uh, CS, which is capsule suspension, you see these two. They are residual, meaning that mm. anywhere you use them, they will stay active in that place for a very long time so they keep acting they keep affecting the insect for a long time that's why they are called residual so they reside in the place you have used them that's the layman explanation of it whenever you use any residual insecticide they reside there one baby any as in they will be there and they become part of that place for for a long time even for years, as the case may be. Exactly. Premise has 10 years warranty. That's why it is exactly. like That's that. Why it is. So for those who are listening, you can get a bottle of Premise from Pest Shop by D Fortune. And um, before before we wrap up the show, I'm going to call in their phone lines, the phone lines of Pest Shop that you can easily get this product from. You can They can deliver it to you from whatever state and uh, wherever you are right now. So, okay. So now we're talking about the soy treatment. So we've talked about uh, that intro to, an intro into the, the soy treatment. How exactly can this termites, termiticide, like I said, the termites, something like termites stay underground. Do we just splash the, the chemicals on the floor? We do the spraying or we do the fogging? <laughs> or those nah. Who, who, who fog? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. When you are treating termites, <laughs> eh? when you are treating exactly. termites, yeah. you see spray, spraying does not work. 100%. <laughs> Fogging does not work. Uh, Are you getting it? it when you're treating yes. subterranean termites, is it the soil? You want to so fog inside the soil. <laughs> so the way to do soil treatment is this: for an existing structure, eh, we dig yeah. trenches, trenches around the structure. Mm. So you dig it, you dig trenches. See, mind my words. I say trench, I didn't say gutter. Some people they, in in an attempt to dig trenches, they are digging a wide gully around the structure i think so it's best to give us like the the correct <laughs> measurements so people exactly. don't know these things they you see people uh -huh. digging gutter around the <laughs> structure saying they are doing they are doing they are excavating all over the place saying they are doing trenching <laughs> so the recommended dimension you use is six by six six inches by six, six inches. inches six inches wide 
by six, six inches deep. Hmm. Six inches wide by six inches deep. Six inches is, you know, that was ruler we used to use those days. Yes. Yeah, it's 12 inches, half of a ruler. Oh, if you don't even want to disturb your brain that far, you see shovel, eh? You know that shovel? Yes. The blade of, yes. the, blade of a, the blade of a shovel. The yeah? Shovel. Yes. yes. The, the length of it. Oh, nice. Just use that as your measurement. Use the length of it. Use the width of it and the length of it. You are good to go. Perfect. Yeah, so that on the field, you do that. So that you don't start Perfect. using, you don't start, you take tape, that measure. You do No, <laughs> on the field, you don't do all that. On the field, you match, you go in and you start doing the job. Nobody say, good day, look. are you a construction worker? So if you have all this, uh nugget all these uh tips exactly eh? you can just get to the field and start doing what you are doing all oh. right uh -huh. so, the one, one, th one thing about uh, one thing i know about prof is that is is always preaching that space control operators build capacity silently and come out and showcase themselves and you know you don't want the situation whereby your clients are the ones that are teaching you I, I got that. I got yeah. that lesson from Prof. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Mm. Now, we, we, we've talked about the treatment for um, subterranean termites. There is also another termite that, like the, the one you will have with um, Casino Heights that, that you give us a case study. How are you currently solving that problem for the drywood termites? You see, the treatment of drywood termites is a, is a very technical one. One of the best ways to treat that with termites is by what we call tenting. But we don't do that in this part of the world. It's a very expensive procedure. Mm. So that's where you, you tent. That's the real fumigation. That's the real fumigation. Uh, yes, that's it. <laughs> you use a tent to cover a whole structure. And you introduce, mm. uh, you introduce gases into the space. So the idea is this. Fumigants you introduce into that space and cover everywhere. The idea is that the fumigants will travel inside that tent, through the building, enter everywhere, and then kill the uh, termites in the furniture, termites in the walls, termites in the doors, wherever they are, wherever they are hiding. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. That works very perfectly. And it's a very, very uh, tricky procedure. It's a very technical procedure. Is a very dangerous procedure as well because before you open up the tent, you have to do testing, test whether the thing you have released inside that place has come down, whether it's still in the air, whether it's still there, and all that. So it's not for um, uneducated people. All right, in this part of the world, it is not. Um, we have not even started doing that. And if you want to do that, <laughs> you're going to spend a lot of money. How many clients can pay for such services? Exactly. Uh, I'm, even it's it's treatment. Yeah, I'm hoping that in the in the near future we'll start doing that. I'm even considering, you know, um, bringing in the things that they used to do. They, we used for that from uh, from US. But now let me come to how we handle it here. Yeah. You see, for dry wood termites, eh? Because they are in that wood that they are infesting, it makes treating them difficult. So the first thing you need to do is to identify where they are. You need to know where they are. So when you now identify where they are, you treat them where they are. So one of the ways to identify where they are is this. You know, first of all, the giveaway sign of the presence of uh, dry wood termites in a, in a furniture or in, in, a, in a wooden whatever is first of all you see gra you see frass the presence yes. of frass so wherever you see frass you now say okay there are diwood termites here then you start checking mm -hmm. the 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 door if it's a door now you start checking sometimes we we knock yeah sometimes we see like blister on the on the surface of the wood so when you see those things eh you now uh you now know that they are there so what we do 
is that we peel off that area. We peel mm -hmm. off that area, you see them exposed. In fact, when you see them, there was one time we were, we were working in, in an apartment and the clients happened to be there because we, we tell them that they can even be there while we work because we don't use things that will chase them away from the place. So you, we opened up the place like this. If you see the swarms of termites inside that place, hmm. goose pimples were just popping out of the woman's body like this. Wow. Then you do in injection. Sometimes you do drill and treat. You drill on the wood. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. You drill that place. Use your injection, injector, inject tamicitide solution into the Jeez. place to kill them. So if you've done, if you have used the uh, peeling type, you peel. After peeling, you know, you will deface the door. The wall, yes. Uh, it's not, uh, yeah, door. So after you've done that, you now need to like resurface it. There's something we call resurfacing by filling up the place and making it look okay. uh, like nothing has happened, yes. So these are things that um, if you don't know, you can't do. If you are not taught, you can't just go and be practicing. You know, mm. that's why education is key. Education is key. So that's the Amazing. way to deal with dry wood termite because you can't deal with them by spraying. Because if you spray, it's not going to enter the wood now. It's just it wood. <laughs> it'll be spilling down. <laughs> it'll just be spilling nice. down. <laughs> nice. So now we've, we've looked at uh, the aspects that spraying would not work. And I'm sure there are professional pest control operators that are like, okay, spraying will not work, foggy will not work. What equipments do I need to get to then solve these termites issues? You know, uh, there's something that is common in the industry that I've, that I've noticed is that when they see you carry one particular equipment, and I think somebody, my last guest made mention of that thing, uh, the CEO of Smartwash, that people just, you know, they see that, ah, this person is using Tamafoga in a video. Like, ah, let me to go and buy it. And eventually when they buy it, they don't need it. <laughs> We're coming to that. We're coming to that aspect. I'm going to shake that table. <laughs> but now, uh, what are the tools and equipments that pest control operators or even homeowners mm -hmm. need to use to first, from the inspection to the execution of the job? Okay. For dry wood termites. Nobody, no yes. homeowner should take care of dry wood termite by themselves. Don't even Amazing. try it. Don't even go there. <laughs> but for, uh, yeah, <laughs> don't go there. For um, subterranean termites, there are no special tools. So, but you may need, depending on the case, depending on the severity, or depending on where the, uh, the termites are, are coming out from, you may need a drilling machine, you know, to drill in some areas, right? That is if the place is concreted, okay? Other than yeah. that, what you need is you need shovel or digger to do your trenching, right? You need buckets, okay. <laughs> especially, you know, 20 liter buckets, uh, yes. th that type they use for paint. You understand? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. yes. Especially that because you need that 20 liters eh? solution, yeah. That will fill up 20 liters. You need it for uh 10 uh 10 feet of uh of trench. You know, there's feet of trench. There's technicality yeah. behind this thing, too. So you exactly. need 20 liters of solution to fill up 10 feet of trench. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So that's it. Yes, you, need, you need a bucket, you need bucket, you need shovel or digger, whatever. Those are the major things. Then you need the um you need premise. <laughs> you need premise. You need Those premise. are the things you need. <laughs> Those exactly. are the things you need. <laughs> yeah. So for uh dry wood termites, you need uh, the right uh, insecticide. There are insecticides that come in canisters, right? That you can spray into yeah, those spaces. Like foam. Yeah, yeah, foam. Yeah. You you you, you may need that. Yeah, you need uh, something to inject termicide with into that place. Then you need the uh, insecticide too. Then you need something like uh, um, a machine to drill holes into into wood. Basically, that's it. Mm. But the most important great. important thing you now need is wisdom and knowledge. You know, knowledge. Oh, bro, let me, let me, <laughs> I wanna, that's that's exactly what I'm. <laughs> 
I know Prof is going to talk about that. And that's exactly what I wanted to say before. That you mm. need you need the wisdom. <laughs> you need know, you're, you're not a preacher of you're not a preacher of love, but you're a preacher of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, it's important. That's what you very, need. Very, it's very, yeah. very important. Because without knowledge, even if you have the best equipment, you won't even know how to use it. True. With knowledge, True. with knowledge, if you don't have any equipment, you will still solve the problem. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Exactly. You know, because I've, I've that, had use. Yeah, go on. Let's go ahead, sir. Okay, so because I've done pest control jobs without carrying equipment, what I just go with is my bag, one bag, one small bag I hold in my hands. And I go yeah, solve, I <laughs> yeah, I go to solve uh, cockroach problems. I go to solve uh, um, ant problems easily, comfortably, without any equipment. Yeah. That's, that's, that's it. That's it. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm a product of prof and so many <clears throat> other uh, trainers out there. So many, so many. So one thing I know about prof is the fact that you, you must learn and you will learn. You better don't just learn the hard way. <laughs> uh, no, it's a soft way it's, because what you do, you just sit down and read and exactly. uh, atten attend trainings. It's very soft. You know, but, not no, hard. No, no. Let's, 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 let's even look at the, the aspect of training. Um, do people really even take training really much serious as it should be? As a trainer that you are, just want to get that bad perspective. Yeah. Um, so, uh, generally speaking, no, people don't take training serious. But the thing is this, eh? um, uh, for, for some of us that train, eh, we okay. show the, the workings of our wisdom, of our knowledge. So by the showing of the workings, people get inspired mm -hmm. and they will want to, ah, let me tap from the anointing of this person. So that's what's been going for some of us. That's why I've been, I've been doing a three months incubation training for pest control people. So I'm on batch E. I started from batch A. So batch A, B, wow. C, D. I'm on E now. And presently wow. in batch E, yes, in batch E, I think I have up to 15 to 20 people in that batch. In the, wow. in the previous batches, they, they, there was one batch that had 30 something to close to 40. So, wow. yes, uh, yes, um, people want to, you know, the kind of training people like going for. That's from my experience now. Yes. Training that will, you know, what they call hands on. Mm. Hands on. That's after true. the after true. the training, you can go out there and be performing wonders. That's the kind of training that mm. people really want. People really want. Uh, mm. that's, that's, that's it. That's true. That's true. I mean, I, I think this also would also go as uh, maybe a feedback to much more trainers that I think more people really would love to get practical insight, maybe beyond classroom trainings, because all these things, they can actually read them online. I, 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 of I course. Mean, they can read them online. Of, of course. They can read yeah. them online. Mm. But like you said, I got something from what you said, is that people buy based on the results that you carry first. Yeah. Exactly. The results you carry first as a trainer also for, for the brand. That's, that's really, really amazing. I, I think... Uh, so now, you know, there was, there was a point I made mention that I said I'm going to talk about again. And, and what, I, I want us to touch into that part. You know, I've been seeing some videos flying on the internet. Just see that uh, some pest control operators go in into residential apartments with foggers, thermal foggers. And I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> I know you've, you've raised you've raised concerns like this. In fact, you shared videos like this on the on your platform. I'm like, <laughs> you know, people, people come at you and say, "Why are you sharing these videos? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that?" But I mean, I I, I just want to hear from you. What's 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 your take on that? So, if you see somebody that displays that on his Instagram handle, on his social media mm -hmm. account, eh, that person doesn't know what he's doing. Yes, sir. As in, that's the that's the fact. Mm. That's the bitter fact. Anybody that does that, even if this person is a big name in the industry, 
and one of his people is doing that. You see, that brand, they don't know what they are doing. They are, they are not supposed to be in the business of pest control. Because you do not use Tamafoga inside people's... What, what, mm. what are you killing inside the other apartment that you need Tamafoga for? What exactly do you want to kill? <laughs> eh? what, what is there that you can't deal with with spraying? In fact, spraying is even... We deliver a residual treatment for you, Tam which Tamafoga can, uh, Tama cannot do. Mm. Yeah? Let me give you an... Uh, uh, you know... Me, I will talk from experience. I was uh, at a hotel. I wanted to lodge a friend in that hotel. The friend came from outside the outside Nigeria. I wanted to lodge, lodge the person in that hotel. Uh, and uh, why I went there to make the person had not even come down yet. I, I wanted to make arrangements and book a place before the person comes down. You understand? So yes, went to that hotel. <laughs> on getting inside the hotel eh? I could perceive you know when you use Tamafoga especially when you mix with uh, diesel you can perceive the thing yes, in the air right perceive the smell. Yes, yes I could perceive the smell and there was thick smoke ha. in the air in the hotel <laughs> alright wow. the, the job was done the night before ha. yeah the job was done the night before. So, wow. the people working in the hotel, instead of aerating the place before admitting mm -hmm. people in, or blah, you know, they just... And I, they, they told me that there was no guest, but I went to make inquiries, right? You had I guest to, already, no? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, as I entered, I was hit with the smoke. I saw the smoke. Wow. And you know, when you release this smoke into tight spaces and you lock up everywhere, they will still be there till the next day. The smoke will be there. It won't... <laughs> uh, it's only when you open up that the thing will escape now. No, be so. So, wow. I got there. And exactly. I... And because of who I am now, I started to educate them and blast the person that did that. Do you know... Do you know that <laughs> after my talk with them, Yes, they collected the job from that person and told me to handle the to be handling the place for them. Totally, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it is evident mm. that whoever did that, one does not know the job. True, true. Two is not health conscious. True. Three does not even know uh, how to deliver good treatment. Hmm. Because Tamafoga is for knockdown purposes. That's what it exactly. is. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's what and it different is. Pests have, different pests have different treatment methods. Exactly. So you want hmm. to kill cockroaches, and you are, especially German cockroaches, and using Tamafoga. <laughs> they play. <laughs> they, they play. <laughs> they play. <laughs> so anybody you <laughs> see, you should print this my word anywhere. Any brand you see using Tamafoga inside people's apartment, the, the brand doesn't know what it's doing. They don't know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. Seriously. They are not educated. That's what I would say. Yeah, that's what you know. A lot of a lot of people are not educated in this part of the world in pest control. They just believe mm -hmm. this because they see others doing it, they want to do it. You know. <laughs> Bro, I said table tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, so, I uh, take people, I take people up whenever I see it. I go, I tell you, this is wrong. I take people up, you know. I, I've, I I've seen up. that. <laughs> and I've a lot seen, of people, seen... a lot of people have changed, you know. You know, sure. yeah. You know, beyond 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 the negative aspects, maybe not so much negative, you know, maybe negative past might be that okay, people are saying. Oh, why would you do that? Why would you do that? It's wrong to DM somebody or something like that. But it also helps the brand if the person can humble him, 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 him or herself to learn. And that's a whole lot of courage. I mean, that's that's a very good one because you are building more people to be able to do great things in the industry. And sincerely speaking, I really, really salute you, sir. And I honor, I, I honor you, sir, for that. That's a very, very good one. You know what, what we need to do, eh? Yes, you see, the, the thing I do in correcting people like that is not just yes. to 
feel good or to um, blast them. But it's because of my love for the industry because they yes, are yeah. spoiling the industry for a lot of people. Okay? True. They yes. are making some of us look bad. You know? And it's good for all of us to be at the same level. Say, the fact that we all know what we are doing. That way, clients can pay us better. So you won't see somebody charging 10,000 naira to do... You understand what I'm saying? Because those most of those people that carry Tama for up and down, those are the ones that will collect 15,000 naira to treat a whole, a whole flat. You get what I'm saying? So if they know what they are doing, hmm. eh, they will, they will, their, 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 their value will increase. And with the increase in their value in, their, in the um, deliverables, their, their charges too will go up, which will be a plus for us. So that when we are charging that our premium uh, price, the other the clients out there will be comfortable. They will not be like uh, somebody can do it for ten thousand, somebody can do it for twenty thousand, and all that. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Now speaking about uh, you know pest control operators, what are the major things that we or maybe homeowners that are listening currently? What are major things they need to look out for in a pest control operator <laughs> before they can hire? Because that's also very much important. First of all, so let me give homeowners uh, this expo. Exactly. If if your pest management pest uh, pest con pest or uh, if the vendor you you want to employ cannot confidently or comfortably tell you the active ingredient in the pesticides he's using, sack the person. I feel like Did you get that? Wrong. Exactly. Most, Sack the most person. operators just hide and hoard the active ingredients. I don't even know the health status of your clients. So, if you are a client, if you are um, a consumer of pest management services, and you are listening to me now, you need to know the content of what somebody is coming to introduce into your space. Because your health is important. And when the person gives you the content, Google is your friend. I just go search these things and educate yourself. You want to you want to know the things he's using. Then after asking him, then demand for the MSDS sheets of those active ingredients. That is material mm -hmm. safety data sheet. So that you want you, you, you want to know what that person is intending to use. It's just like okay, you take a patient. Uh, your loved one to the hospital, uh, somebody that is sick, your loved one. It will be dumb of you to not want to know what the doctor is administering to that person in terms of mm. injection or, or tablets. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It will be dumb of you as the relative of that patient not to know what the doctor is injecting into your person you you need to know exactly you know and then a lot of doctors uh, uh wise knowledgeable doctors out there will will first of all tell you what they want to do and what they are doing before they carry it out they will give you all the details you understand so that's it so the same thing goes for pest management service if you are a consumer of pest management service you need to know what that person intends to use. In fact, you need that person, you need the person to give you a report of his treatment regimen. You know, <laughs> that is when you, you will be able to tell whether this person knows his onions or not. Hmm. So if that person That's cannot even put, yeah, if the person cannot even put together a, a coherent sentence that has to do with pest control, sack the person. Because this is our job is a matter of life and death. Too. The chemicals, the, the insecticides we use, you know, are not for just anybody. And it's a pity the way uh, our, our country is. Anybody, everybody is just doing anyhow. Hmm. People who have no rights to even carry pest control equipment are carrying it up and down. People who have no right to be handling pesticides are handling it. 
you know, endangering other people's lives. Great. Uh, th there's an aspect that you just raised that the fact that some of a lot of people, but let me place it in your words, like you said initially about quacks that are in the industry that uh you know or let me say quacks because it's like a very big voluminous word right uh let me say that those people the handlers that are not uh, well educated what do you think should be the the best procedure in cutting down such activities should it be that the regulatory bodies needs to come into place or or i don't know what what's what's your view on that the regulatory bodies need to do more it's not just about collecting money. That's what most of the regulatory bodies in a part of the world do. They are just interested in that money you want to pay. They are not regulating anything. I'm, I'm, I need to be uh, blunt about that. They are not regulating anything. All right? Because if they are, if they are, a lot of people will not be in the business of pest control that are in it right now. Hmm. That's the fact. Yes. That's the fact. Can you, can you give a like an example to that? Okay, Econ is a regu is a regulative body in charge of yes. uh, that, right? Yes, sir. So, Econ need to up their game. All right, I I won't teach them how to do their job now. <laughs> they are the ones that collect. They collect money. They give uh, they is this they certify people, right? Yes. Or they uh, no, not certified license. Yeah, the, the license, license, uh, license. Yes, the license pest control operators. The person yes. you are giving license to, you need to be sure of the person's uh, capability before you handle hand like because that license you are giving him. If the person doesn't know his job, you are simply saying you are licensing him to go and kill people. Hmm. The person you are giving license to, if he doesn't know his onions, you are licensing him to use dangerous chemicals out there to um, to to injure people and harm people. So you're giving license to people. You ought to know their standing in the profession. You even know to you need to know whether they are certified. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. certified means that okay. The thing is that you want to know whether they've been trained. You don't stop at looking at their certificate before you license them. Give them a mock exam. Let okay. You, you I want to I, know. I wanted, I wanted to. I wanted you to 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 give me like uh like a sample because for instance now um to be honest I'm I'm currently processing my aircon and one thing I've noticed from aircon is that you first need to have um lacepa you need to have pecan before you can get aircon that's number one. Number mm. two is that they, they would ask you for training certificates. Even before you get to Pekan, Pekan will ask you for training certificates. Who trained you? Mm. Who trained you? You have, must provide certificates. So when I did mine, I had to put up a lot of certificates that I have gotten over the years, put it up together. And again, they also would request from their form, they also request for the type of equipment that you have. And they will also send somebody to come into your facility to check your facility if it's correct. Right, so I think I think they are doing well from my own because I've I've I'm processing mine, so I've seen like the whole process. It takes time, you, you know. know you know, like you I, said, un I understand what you're saying, but you know where the problem yes. is. The problem is this: anybody can get a certificate, right? Mm, so that's believe me, uncle. if I pay for a course, even if I flunk the course, won't you give me my yes. certificate? Mm, that's true. Yes. And so most most uh, people that uh, train, yeah, after yes. training, there's nothing like exam to even to actually even test, test the the, uh, the knowledge mm -hmm. level of this of the person that they, they have trained. So the fact yeah. is this: a lot of people have certificates yet they don't even know, they don't know the um, a, an inch of what we do. All right. So as regulatory bodies, you want to license the person. The person is giving you, showing you uh, proof that he has been trained in the form of certificate. Mm. The onus is on you as a regulatory body to still examine the person, whether the person is actually what he claims. 
True. It is not the, the certificate is not going to show the person's uh, uh, you know knowledge of the industry. It's just going to show that the person has gone to school. True. See, yeah, uh, the way the way it is done in US, <laughs> you cannot be licensed, eh, that's without true. being that's without true. being drilled. Yeah, you'll be true. drilled now, Abba. True. And every I, state, I every state has their own licensing, their own licenses. whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And even the fact that you're even licensed, there's always like a CEU points that you get for every webinar or even physical trainings that you attend. And I feel like, like you said. These are the things that um these are the things that pest control. I mean, the regulation bodies needs to up in their game. Check, regu check, uh, do regular maybe exam like you said exam like a mock exam would do would go a very long way actually. Yeah, that that point you raised was a very very fantastic one. All right, so we just dived into different different aspects and that has to do with that's amazing to actually look into those parts. So now, if we go back into the topic of today, which is termite control, uh, first and foremost, let's check out uh, for comments or inquiries from people who are listening tonight. So if you are listening, you can use the chat box on insightradio.net, uh, insightradio.net, and uh, you know participate, participate in the conversation tonight. Maybe you have any comments or uh, any comments or suggestions or anything. You can drop it on InsideRadio.net or even go to our Facebook account at InsideRadio underscore to, you know, drop in your comments or your suggestions and all. All right. Initially, when I started, I talked about premise. So you can get in your premise from the Fortune Pet Shop and Pet Shop number, which is where, whereas they are a major sponsor for tonight's show, is uh, 090 990-7382-090-990-7382-0909-990-7382. That's the phone lines to call in for Pet Shop to get the premise products that works perfectly well for termite control. All right, okay. It's been a wonderful time, you know, Justin and uh, sharing insights on Insight Radio with Prof <laughs> tonight. So now let's talk about the prevention. How can homeowners prevent termite? Prevention is better than cure, they say. So okay. let's first start from the prevention aspect. I'm going to start with the, mo the difficult, with the most difficult, and that is at the point of foundation. You are preventing or you are not mm. treating. Do soil mm. treatment. Yeah, get a professional to treat that place you want to set up your building. That's the first thing. All the uh, wooden stuff you want to use in that place, get a professional to treat the wood before you use them. That's prevention, right? That's where it starts from. Yes. Yeah, so if you have not done that, if you have not done that, what you now need to do is this. So that... Um, termites, subterranean termites, because for <laughs> dry wood termites, there's no prevention with that one. No. Most times you bring them with the wood into your place. <laughs> you understand? <clears throat> so, still on subterranean termites, if you have your existing structure and you want to uh, prevent, first of all, make sure that there are no uh, wood lying about in your space. Mm. Whatever wood you don't use is a threat. Discard them. You are not a firewood seller. <laughs> Remove all unwanted wood or unused wood. Take them away from around your structure. That's one. Prevent moisture from accumulating in any part of your uh, facility. Even to the point of, you know, where taps, they leak. Make tap the leak. No, yes. don't allow yes. it. Do not allow it at all. Then most importantly, get a professional to come and inspect your home for you. Hmm. On the it's part of it's part of inspection. So when a professional like me now, if I come inspect your home for termite, the first some of the things I will notice are the likely cracks or holes or whatever that termites can enter through i will point out these things so that you can fix them that way mm. 
you are safeguarding your facility. Thank you. Amazing, amazing, amazing. That's a very, 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 very robust, short and precise point uh, to, to preventing termites. So, uh, so we just have just a few more minutes. I don't think we have uh, comments. Let me check the chat box. If there are more comments for people. All right. Uh, okay, so we have Smartwatch on the chat box. Is asking ISB. I'm in the spirit with the program. Yeah, in the spirit. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know. I don't know what that's supposed to be. <laughs> it said, send the recorded video to us. Well done. Thank you. Yes, the recording videos were or the, the recordings will be out as soon as possible. We we'll published on multiple platforms, uh, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Spotify, and um, LinkedIn, and so many other platforms like that. You can also check it. So the, for those who are you know tuned in on Insight Radio, you can use the chat box if you have any comments or inquiries or anything at all. You can use the chat box. So, uh, so what would be your last parting words for tonight? Maybe some just some short tips that you want to give to the people. Oh yeah, it's just in one sentence for pest management professionals. Please show up your knowledge. Increase your knowledge in this industry. Get mm -hmm. trained. Get educated. Because that's the best thing you can do for yourself. True. That's it. True. True. Fantastic. Fantastic. Show up your knowledge. Develop much more better. Do not let the industry over... I mean, go ahead of you. You need to go ahead of the industry and stay at feet abreast about what is going on in the industry. Still educated. Join platforms. Uh, we'll be launching out the Pest Experience Fans Club community that has to do with, you know, before we actually place it out first, we first have to get consults with entomologists because those are the people, entomologists, you know, Pest Experience actually cut across different states, different cities and different countries. Uh, we consulted a couple of people experts, professors that are in different various industries to hacks for their collaborations and contributions to be on this platform. So in this week, we'll be dropping out the link to this platform for those who have been you have subscribed to our newsletters, the Pest Experience newsletters, amazing. And if you want to get well informed or you are listening right now and you are wondering how do I get the link to join the platform, just call the number or you send a WhatsApp message to 90 one seven eight two seven seven six seven zero nine zero one seven eight two seven seven six seven that's the phone lines to call in if you have any queries or questions or anything or if you want to even sponsor the pest experience show i mean please do you're welcome right? that's that's what we need right so if you feel like what we are doing is really really amazing and the show pest experience show got across different states because across different city because across different country so you can sponsor the show place your adverts on the show uh all you need to do is send us an email at info at insightradio.net or you can call 090 178 all right for those who joined in thank you very much for your time for joining them tonight uh, it's been a wonderful time out here. Like I said, the phone lines to call is 90 178 That's the phone lines to call in if you have any questions, queries, concerns, or sponsor the show or advertisement on this show. Uh, my name is Shofu Abarolak Sofilos. And on this note, I would really, really would love to appreciate our one and only uh prof the press control prof for sharing his own insights into today's topic of termite control like yes. we'll be out on multiple platforms tonight so still well informed and in that note keep learning keep stay focused keep learning keep developing yourself i'll see you on the next episode next week same time same station inside radio.net at www.insider.net and also watch us live on Facebook. I'll see you. Have a wonderful night first. Inside the radio. Are you a builder, a contractor, a real estate developer, or a private house owner? Did you know? 
that over 90% of Nigeria's land is prone to termites, destroying over $5 billion worth of properties annually. Do not build that next house without first treating the soil with premise termite buster that gives up to 10 years building protection guarantee against subterranean termites. Premise 200 SC is used for both pre- and post-construction treatment. Premise 200 SC is made by Bayer and distributed in Nigeria by D Fortune Pest Shop. For more technical enquiries on termites and general fumigation, contact WhatsApp line 0703-289-6271. Order online at pestshop.ng. Protect your hard-earned assets against termites today.